let's plot a plane. So I've prepared a tracing paper already for this. Alright, and let's plot a plane. with a strike of 30 and a dip of 20. Since I'm using right hand rule, and because the strike is 030 or somewhere in the northeast quadrant, I know that the plane dips to the southeast. Because I know that strike is a horizontal line that lies within the plane, I know that it plots where all horizontal things do, somewhere on the primitive circle. So 030, or 30 degrees east of north, 10, 20, 30 is right here. Okay, we'll say this is called this plane A. And notice when I count, I'm using where the small circles touch the primitive circle. I'm using that as my scale. So to add dip and plot the whole plane, we need to know the dip direction. Well, that's easy. We just talked about how since, well, I'm using right-hand rule, since it strikes to the northeast, it must dip to the southeast then. We can also find dip direction really easily if by revolving the tracing paper over our steronet so that our strike is at the north pole of the steronet. 90 degrees clockwise of that then is right here is our dip direction along this east-west line. So from here, from the dip direction, I'm going to count in the dip angle. 10, 20. So there's where dip plots on the steronet. So a plane is a flat surface. Well, remember when I'm looking at a steronet, I'm looking at the lower hemisphere. Okay. Well, if I have an entire surface coming in, that surface is going to intersect with that lower hemisphere in an arc, or it's going to look like a great circle. So I'll go ahead and draw out that great circle now that connects strike to the dip. I'll just draw it out like this following the great circles that are drawn on our steronet. There we go. Okay, so then if I return north, back to north, that is what plane A looks like. So, a couple useful things we'll notice here is that the plane touches horizontal at strike, here and here. And the, the great circle of the plane bows in the dip direction to the southeast. Let's plot another plane. Let's plot plane B. And plane B will have a strike of 204, 63. Okay, so again, uh, let's plot strike, since strike plots easily somewhere on the great circle. So 204, so 0, 90, 180, 190, 200, 202, 204. There's the strike to plane B. I'll make sure I label plane A as well. Remember, I'm still using right-hand rule, so if the strike is in the southwest quadrant, its dip direction is going to be in the northeast, is going to be in the northwest quadrant. So let's revolve the tracing paper so that B goes to either the north or the south pole. So I'm not just going to draw out a great circle to the right and count in from the right necessarily, because if this is strike, I know that uh, I know that it should be dipping in the direction in the southwest northwest direction. Well, if this is north, 
then this is west. So this is the line that I'm going to count in. I'm going to count in from this direction, since this is in the northwest quadrant. This, on the other hand, is between east and south. So this, so counting in from here would be counting in from the southeast quadrant, completely opposite of, our, of the dip direction of this plane. So let's count in from here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 3. Alright, and I'll draw in that great circle. Make sure I label it, and I'm done. Now that I've drawn two planes, let's quickly check ourselves, make sure we drew these correctly. There's, you have a couple of ways to check yourself. The first question is, is the strike in the correct quadrant? So A should be 0, 3, 0, which means it should be close to north in the northeast quadrant. Well, that certainly seems to be true. How about B? B should is striking 204. Well, 204 is close to south in the southwest quadrant, which is true. So check on both of those. Next question is, is it dipping shallowly, uh, or the same as this number here? Well, A is dipping 20 degrees, which is certainly fairly shallow, and it plots close to the primitive circle, where everything's horizontal, so that's check. B is much steeper, it's dipping 63 degrees, and it plots a lot closer to the center of the staring net, so that's a check. Next is the dip direction. Well. A should be dipping to the southeast quadrant, and the plane bows out in that direction, so let's check for A. B should be dipping in the northwest direction, which it is, so check for B. Doing these checks not only helps you make sure that your data is plotted correctly, but also gives you practice reading hysteria in it, and the more you practice, the faster and and more reliable you're, uh, you'll get with understanding a staring at.